Hi everybody and welcome to Pacific Diva Dot World. I'm Pacific Diva sharing my world and here today I'm sharing with my son friend Anne-Marie. Now we've known each other for a couple of years so we are absolutely excited. I'm excited to have you here welcome to my first episode. Um, my first podcast episode of the new year 2023. So today we're talking about why New Year's resolution is no resolution. <laughs> um, it's too goal-oriented, to be too honest. Goal and we are all about manifesting. So <laughs> that's what we'll be discussing today. So let's go through um, a couple of years. Uh, we've gone through quite a bit of a turmoil in a couple of years. So for New Year's resolution, I think for me a couple of years ago, and like as I progress through, like I do want the year to be over because of everything that you've gone through in life, which yeah. has been a difficult year. But at the same time, I understand that this timeline is a linear timeline and a linear calendar. Mm -hmm. So really, what are your thoughts on that? How have you dealt with New Year's resolutions for the last couple of years? Well, I used to do New Year's resolutions every year and I would write them down and I would reflect on what I've achieved. And so a few years ago, I decided I wasn't going to do that anymore. I was just going to not set any goals, but just kind of see what happened. And at first it was just an experiment. And it was just to see what would happen. Would my year end up richer or would it be the same? Or like how different would it be? And so what I found was by removing those goals I removed a lot of the kind of uh, expectations that I put on myself mm. the shoulds oh. that I feel I need to do mm. um, it also made me unplug from the matrix in that I felt like I was setting goals that were keeping me part of the matrix mm -hmm. and setting goals that were just you know I was chasing something did I want what I was chasing well that was the question yeah exactly and um, I think we come from a very corporate project management background. Like, people understand we've done high end, multi million dollar projects, traveled around. Like, for us, I found that linear project management, like, basically changing that project management into energy management. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, how did you transition? Because to do that experiment yeah. and say, well, I am removing what others have of me mm. as well as myself. Yeah. And I'm going to tap into more of the universal timeline, more of the manifestation and that energy. So to talk through some of that, mm. oh, the, the journey. Because really <laughs> <laughs> I want to be in a journey. Yeah. Right? yeah. Oh, there's, there's a few parts to it because, you know, there's the kind of not living up to other people's expectations mm -hmm. as well as your own. Um, there's also understanding that time is linear. So when we set a goal that is for 12 months, it's, it's forgetting that time is not, that time is not linear that when we manifest, we manifest for something to happen and it happens in its own natural way mm -hmm. and allowing us to let go. We need to let go mm -hmm. to allow it to happen. And what I found was I was holding on to those goals too tight mm -hmm. and it was actually stopping them from happening. So when we let go of the linear timeline and we let go of the goals, and we actually surrender to allowing the manifestation 
and the and the and actually actively manifesting rather than goal setting and taking a an holistic view will you create your reality rather than saying well this is the goal I want and it kind of has to sit in with the external universe. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of bringing the universe internal. Um, there are several parts to that because um, you also have to remember that we are eternal. So we are only on this planet having a human experience for this moment. So we treat, and you know, we treat time because it's linear as if it's running out. And I suppose to some extent this experience is, 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 is transient. But it's also just embracing the moment mm -hmm. and, and embracing the, where we are and, and enjoying the moment and not getting too caught up in it. <laughs> Well, I, I remember watching this video um, where they said, you know, divine source or however you want to call it, God says to, to us, I mean, would you like to experience what it's like to feel emotion, to live in a human body, to go through this journey just for a little time? And then we're birthed through it. And so... But then we return, and even some of the prophecies um, also in religion, it's like, well, we belong to divine, we belong to God, and so we come and we return. Mm -hmm. um, so seeing a timer like that, it really wakes you up, like, um, in terms of your perspective, in terms of understanding and surrendering. Like you said, you just let go. Mm. And I found that um, I'm going to let go of my notes. <laughs> okay. In the spirit of what we're doing, I'm letting go of those notes. <laughs> I'll look at them a little bit. <laughs> but um, I went back to my Pacific Indigenous wisdom. And back then, they would have to navigate through the stars. Like huge ocean waves so that's what they'd be doing navigating through that and they would trust something that is beyond human imagination yeah right and they would plug into the universal cycles mm -hmm. so when i looked at it i thought okay we governed ourselves through the moon cycles we didn't govern ourselves through this gregorian calendar <laughs> like yes you know, it's so interesting because it is something I've been reflecting on lately mm -hmm. is that we have our moon cycles mm -hmm. and we have women, we have our cycle. Yes, and it's we do. 28 days. 28 days, spot on. And it, and it synchronizes with the moon. Correct. Yeah, our calendar is not the no. same. And so it's had me question, you know, over the centuries, we have operated on there being different calendars out there what's the calendar we're operating on right now because mm. it is not synchronizing with us absolutely so when new year's comes around like for me it's like well are we in sync with the cycle is it really new is it really new year's like <laughs> what is and it this whole year i've been questioning <laughs> I know we celebrate Christmas around this time. Mm. Is it really Christmas? <laughs> so I'm hearing it's September. Yes. And then, and then I think about the cycles and I go, I've been into 13 months of 28 days. Mm -hmm. Is that the cycle we're meant to be rhythmically at? Rhythmically at? Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, it has you question everything. <laughs> but I love that because it is. The only, you know, part of this awake, being awake to the freedom of choice and being awake to freedom of, of what we consume and freedom of what we can do mm -hmm. is actually unlearning what we've learned over such a long time. Yeah. And then just letting it go and then not attaching to anything and just going, 
or what's out there, what information's coming in, using discernment mm. and not holding on to you know, whatever it might be. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, and really open. Yeah. Since this time, I, for the last couple of years, I've really grown into my divine feminine energy. And I found also by understanding my moon cycles, my cycles, um, I tapped into the flow of, yeah, just life in itself. What I also noticed is that I attract somebody with really good masculine divine energy. Yeah. And let me tell you, when you do that as a single woman on a proper natural cycle, wow. <laughs> As soon as it, we'll, we'll have to do another uh, podcast on um, attracting <laughs> <laughs> your counterpart, your divine energy, because like it is phenomenal. But I found that I started to appreciate the inner core of who I am, right, and and then. Everything else, like, it's not about not exercising or eating healthy or whatever, but I just radiated. That's what I wanted from the inside, that mm -hmm. energy. Like, I didn't want to have toxic things in my body because I started to understand I am divine energy. Like, and, and that, that's how I can manifest or bring that because any toxicity would just get in the way of that. What's your thoughts? Like, it's interesting. Because um, obviously we go from our own journey. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been really embracing that I am love mm. and that I give love, I receive love, I am love. And that has helped me on my divine feminine journey mm -hmm. and my self-love journey in that when I understand that in my essence, I am love, it helps me just rationalise. I don't know if it be rationalised, but it, it, it just helps me kind of live in a way that I want to live but it, it has helped to soften things mm. so you know situations that are difficult um embracing that inner you know embracing inner child that mm. is wanting that is scared understanding that getting guidance from my higher self mm -hmm. and um Embracing that I, at my essence, I am love, and that then helps me with balancing out my my divine feminine and my divine masculine in how I operate. Mm. So, um, and like an operating system where we're connecting with with you know we're connecting with source, we're connecting with our divine. And then I do our last one, we're connecting with love for the universe mm. and, and really embracing that mm. and using our higher self as a guide and understanding our inner child that drives all of the emotions. Mm. So when we kind of are operating with this system around us um, and recognising that the divine thing does bring out that beautiful energy that we have inside and brings out, like I said, that glowing, just, you know, allowing us to bliss out on life and, and then recognising that the divine feminine also brings us into reality. But it's funny also because I can't help but think that our mood, you know, our feminine cycle also is tied into the masculine mm -hmm. and the reality check. So you know when you cycle through and there's a point of the cycle where you're a little short, right? <laughs> a little short? A little short. <laughs> <laughs> a short. Whoever's <laughs> watching this who is not right, a little short. A little short. So this is this is our reality check. You know, we're blissing out where you know in the divine feminine. But we get to this point and it's like, bang, our reality check. 
all right, I feel um, all this shit. Yeah. You know, the, you, you know, and it's kind of like it, it, it sort of tests your reality and says, you know, what is enough and what is too much. Um, and it's sort of our, our kind of keeping things in check. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it naturally does that. And to, you know, because if we were without that, that cycle, that where we, you know, get into that emotional state, we wouldn't recognize mm -hmm. when things are maybe going off the radar a little bit or when it keeps things on track. Yeah. And if we use it as a tool to kind of, you know, keep things in check, and it's actually so, because it, it helps us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We embrace it better. <laughs> <laughs> and I think coming into the new year, um, which is a Gregorian calendar year, <laughs> call it the mass understanding of what the new year is. Yeah. Um, I think for me, like we talked about not setting goals. So for me, it's about, okay, I'm going to continue this journey yeah. of uh, tapping into my divine feminine energy, yeah. uh, embracing that knowledge. But also I found that when I looked into it years ago, and I've been studying it quite a bit, um, I found even in my own culture, the Pacific culture, like because of colonisation, they took that mm. with them. Yeah. And it's so embedded. Like we used to walk around with like flowers and topless and with a you know you know leaves whatever you want to call it but you know material and it wasn't looked as sexual like they understood there was this natural beauty yes. in also men, men and women yeah. and and I find that now I, I wonder if because uh, our culture is like high on the obesity level. And sometimes I wonder the energetic thing coming from our ancestors is being transcended through and wondering has that been picked up through the DNA as we go through because it's actually about shame and mm. it's not about, um, you know, being that God, yeah, celebrating that God created you, or you know, I'm going to say God because of um, my culture, but a divine source has has presented you. This is you, and and it's kind of like they're rejecting that. And we know that when you reject things like that, which is natural, yeah, it can actually cause you harm. Yeah, it can cause disease. Yeah, disease, disease. <laughs> <laughs> So that's one of my journeys going through to 2023. And obviously through that feminine energy, I mean, I hope I manifest physically my <laughs> masculine divine man. <laughs> if you would just hurry up. <laughs> I am so ready. But what about you? Um, for me, the having sort of, given up the whole news resolution. Yes. I look at manifesting what I want to attract. So rather than, um, you know, kind of that push-pull mm. in that I want to attract the energy, I want to attract, you know, what I'm trying to create, what I'm trying to manifest, um, that is in sync with the universe around me or rather than saying I have a goal and this is it mm -hmm. and stuff everyone else so you know I would rather have um a man manifest something that I want to attract the life I want to attract the you know situations I want to attract and operate in that way mm -hmm. um which doesn't have you know, a start or finish, just like project management. <laughs> <laughs> but is, you know, is each year just building and building yeah. on that manifestation and creating. Um, so that's my sort of goals. And there are things that I suppose that I, you know, I focus on a little tighter, but I, I recognise that 
when I hold things too tight, I actually polarise them away. Mm. So that's where we have to let go and just allow it to manifest in its own timeline. Mm. Um, and, and also, I suppose, for, for the new year and, and the year ahead, you know, continuing to be creative and trying new new mediums of creativity and um, building my card a little mm. um, so that I'm doing more of that and sharing, sharing what comes through and sharing that love, yeah. You know, it, well, I've known you for a couple of years, right, and we've talked about how we've had this gift, this talent that had been oppressed yeah. for so long. Yeah. And you see my journey, I've seen your journey. <laughs> um, so if people don't know, I mean, I'm a singer, I'm a performer. Yeah. And, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> And I'm creative, so it's yeah. quite interesting that you yeah. say creativeness. And that was oppressed for many years, over a decade. Yeah. So to come back and tap into that, I think for me, is a form of self-love, like yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. And there are people out there I know that have probably oppressed, whether it's somebody else that oppressed them, like we understand that, but or they've just decided, oh, I'm too old. Yeah. I'm too old, I can't do this. I used to do this child. And I think getting back to that in a form of self-love and celebration, being kind to yourself, mm -hmm. I've seen you grow mm -hmm. because I see that that creativeness going back. It's kind of like who you are, the yeah. essence of who you yeah. are and, yeah. and really honouring the gifts that are given to you. Yeah. Did you want to share that journey? Because that would have been a bit of a scary thing. Would have yeah. been scary going back to it or like how did you go about that? Um, so, I suppose with my card reading, the, that all that stuff used to come in my dreams for a very, very long time. Yeah. And I think even as a kid, um, there was kind of frustrations with how the world operated and I knew it wasn't right. Yeah. And would be frustrated with it. So I would use my art to kind of get rid of that frustration because I couldn't make sense of the world I lived in. And so anyway, letting go of that and sort of all this stuff coming in my dreams, it and always coming against someone that's like, oh, you made that up, oh, that's oh. just fantasy, oh, that's um, that's just a dream. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's kind of, we're not open to it. Yeah. And so I think the more I kind of realise that we all have this skill, we all have these abilities, but through social manipulation, social engineering, through society, we, we're told not to use it. But it's just that this is just all, you know, whole lot of voodoo mm. stuff. And so it's not accepted, so you suppress it. You mention it, people are like, eh. Um, so I think just over time it was getting stronger and stronger and when I was studying it got an amplified mm -hmm. I don't know if because my brain was being really activated it was being amplified to the point where I was using it then to filter through a whole lot of information very quickly and I actually used it to my advantage almost like a business tool mm -hmm. and so I would write my papers in my head, in my sleep and then I would wake up and just type them out and get HDs. <laughs> so, you know, there is a lot of power in using the intuition um, because we can be very powerful beings 
if we harness to use it and use it smart. But we've sort of been kind of over the years told it doesn't exist and not to use it. But it's a muscle and if we develop the muscle and we spend time building the muscle, mm-hmm. you know, we reap the rewards. Mm-hmm. And so now working out that the key has been meditation and so for the last, I don't know, eight years or something, I've been, you know, since really getting into meditation, the stuff that would come through in my dreams that was very accurate, mm-hmm. it got to a point where I, I thought, oh, I have a dream about blah, and I couldn't ignore it anymore because it was right. Mm-hmm. So it was telling me to do something. So now I, through meditation, it's come through in the day, you know, it comes through when I'm doing my readings mm. and yeah and so forth. And um and I don't necessarily need the cards, but the gut cards are a good kind of visual guide when oh. I'm using someone and it does help to bring it together. Um so you know it is a muscle and it needs to be developed. It's also been a journey of accepting that this is a gift and it's to be shared. And the stuff that comes through is about love and sharing love and caring for people. Um, and it's, it's um, you know, because the, the stuff that comes through is I see things, I hear things, I feel pain in my body, I get a grid in my stomach that is like a four by four. And depending on where there is like a tag, it tells me to tell a story about a relationship dynamic. Yeah. Sometimes people have passed over come through and they either have a message or a valid, there's always a validation. Um, and sometimes there's, you know, downloaded information. Yeah. So I know this stuff yeah. is real. Yeah. Um, because I experience it every day and have for quite some time now. And I know how accurate it is just from, you know, just doing it and doing it for free for so long. Mm. Um, and that was my learning, just doing hundreds and hundreds of people um, and fine-tuning it, mm. like how I fine-tuned the pain in the body was someone opposite me saying, and all of a sudden feeling this incredible pain in my shoulder and yeah. saying, oh, gosh. And then realising that everything that comes through while I'm with that person is not mine, it's theirs, then I realised that it was a mirror. Mm. So the pain was in my left shoulder, so it was in my right shoulder. Um, and then stuff will come through about what they can do to, to help fix that or, you know, with, um, in their, their self-love journey. Yes, yeah, you said some powerful things there, Maria. One of them that resonates with me is about the sharing of your talent, that your talent is there, not to hold and struggle, it's all mine, <laughs> yeah. kind of thing, but to share it. And I... You've been a very close friend, and what other friends have also said to me, Melina, your world is so multi dimensional. <laughs> but when we look at your social media, <laughs> you only put one side of a teeny weeny side of you, and, and when are you going to share? And so, um, for me, it was coming like coming into terms with fine tuning, yeah. coming into terms with honoring that yeah. and what I can give and that um when somebody said your voice your voice is amazing like I've had people cry and they come up to me and they say you just made whatever was inside of me being released yeah. you know things like that yeah. or you reminded yeah. me of my mother or or something and it was like that connection that being of service yeah being yeah. of service has been amazing and and you also brought up that people put you down, like, oh, that's all voodoo. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, right now. And, and that is so mm-hmm. true. Woo, 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 whatever it is. <laughs> 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 like, no. 
Um, but I have these have had these gifts for many years, like since I was little too. Yeah. And and um, there was one stage here. I think you experienced my channeling. Yes. And I cry. Yes. And it was the first time I showed somebody that because usually yeah. I do that in private. Yeah. Um, and when uh, somebody wants me to help them or channel that energy and then to pass it through, I would do that. But not many people know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess that for me was a realisation. I don't know whether you realised that that was the first time mm. that I did that in front of It was people. amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. So it's... And I think you said honouring your gifts. Yeah. So for people out there that want to um, obviously honour the gifts that you have, I mean, I would encourage them to. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, it, it takes courage. It does. It takes courage and to be brave, to believe in yourself and that inner knowing mm. that you're right, mm. that, that knowing and that, that can be hard when there's a lot of pressure around you to conform and be a certain version of yourself. Mm. Um, and that's where you have to fight to be yourself. Mm. I did some, because um, uh, people who are aware, I'm a domestic and family violence advocate, so I, you know, for over 20 years. And this year... I started using that channeling for court cases. Oh, wow. And there was a court case in the States and he was saying, uh, you know, wanting advice, but he didn't know about my gift at that time, right? And so I'm channeling, I'm switching, I'm reading, and I'm going, okay, this is what's come through. And it was positive. So out of that court case, it actually worked out well for him. Like things like that you yeah. were saying about the yeah. shoulder, it's hurting and then helping, yes. using your gifts to help people. Yeah. And through that, he decided to get into spirituality wow. and tap into his divine masculine energy. Um, so, you know, it, it's through that interaction, that relationship, like I'm sure that person would go, why did they know? Like, yeah. what's going on? And, All right, I need to do this. And then, oh, my goodness, this work. Like. Yeah, it's a great impact. It's a huge impact, <laughs> and um, it's 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 fun. Like I get very energized by mm. the fun. I think I don't know <laughs> fun to work, but I definitely get very energized mm. when um, you know things are validated. Mm. So you know, I remember doing a card uh, reading for a woman years ago. And having the clearest picture of this bookshelf, this shelf with crystals on it. Mm -hmm. And it was like a glass cabinet with wood trim and it had the big crystals laid out. There might have been four or five shelves. And I said to her, it, 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 I explained that there was this cabinet full of crystals and it felt like they were her siblings oh. and so I said to her I know that sounds funny but it's more that those crystals hold energy and they've been with you since you're a little girl mm -hmm. so they're like a sibling that grow with you um but it's it's just more meaning that they were they've seen you grow yeah and they're they've been in your life a long time and she said Yes, that's in my parents' living room. Wow. So I've had lots of validations <laughs> like that. And that energizes me because then I go, oh, yeah. <laughs> or I'll see a woman sitting on the floor reading a book to children. And I'll say, you're a teacher. But hang on. And you're a, a kindergarten teacher. Mm. Yes. Mm. So, you know, those validations are really um, just really kind of bring a lot of energy because they you know, I see it for myself that they're yeah. accurate yeah. validation. So I, I witness it for myself. Mm. So it's, yeah. And so the whole um idea of manifesting is to also tap into your source, yeah. your talent. 
because I find that if you not don't do that, you cannot actually manifest, or you you are aligned with a different kind of energy, which is it's not tapping into the universal energy coming through. Um, so yeah, so for twenty twenty three to manifest is tap into that source. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You tap into you as well. <laughs> and there's a lot of um different approaches to manifesting mm. because there is it said that the universal number is three, six, and nine. And so that when you manifest, you sort of pick three goals and then you um think about them for like six seconds each mm -hmm. how you want that to sort of manifest and that you do it for nine days mm -hmm. there's different sort of systems of manifesting that then align with the universal numbers of three six and mm -hmm. nine so um, it's worth playing with it's an idea I do. Yes. <laughs> so you have to be very careful for what yes. you wish for. Yes, you do. You do. Because that's what happened to me. <laughs> be <laughs> very careful. Oh, yes. You have to be very careful for what you wish for. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there are different methods because I know um, when I had that death experience and even before that I was looking into quantum physics and quantum consciousness and then like I said be careful what you wish for <laughs> because it, you have to be very careful yes. with that knowledge it's actually for me it's sacred knowledge and so powerful yeah, and powerful yeah. so in the right way um so yeah so in this new year now I think we've gone through some tips for everybody um so hopefully that helps people who are watching tap into no, noticing that it's okay to not make a New Year's resolution. Yes. It's okay. You go so far. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> In fact, you probably best you probably survive and awaken and to the magic. Yes, the magic. Let it happen. Yeah. Let that magic happen. Like I know for me it's a oh, we're project management, like in our work to the T. Um, and it's like something in me the last couple of years, like, where is the room to allow the magic to happen? Yeah. If you're holding on so tight, yes. if you're planning to the nth degree, like, yes. where is that magic? Um, and where is the self love to just be? Yeah. And that's where I think we have forgotten to just be. Ooh. No plans, no nothing, just be. Because what I have learned over the last year is when things are feeling very volatile yes. and when I'm feeling, well, I'm trying to remove fear and what is helping me remove fear and move more towards forgiveness and love is that when I'm in that moment to actually go, where am I right now? Mm -hmm. Where am I right? I'm safe. Yeah. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. And if when things become really overwhelming, just go, where am I right in this moment? I'm safe. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And if we can just bring ourselves to just that simpleness of being, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the work of um, this, uh, Gajif mm. is all about being. Um, it's an interesting guide to sort of read about. Um, it definitely helps with that kind of being in the moment mm. and, and that mindfulness and letting go of the kind of distraction of having to go do goals, <laughs> go do this and... Yeah, that we need to give ourselves time. Mm. Yeah, and I'm give to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been doing that also in my business. Like I've been taking this knowledge and doing it in my um, flows that I'm aware. I've got how to with a purpose, so I've also not specifically for that world that I'm rebranding now. I'm launching it, you know, <laughs> with love. Um, is that I 
I want to, it's more about attracting. I don't advertise. I don't want to market. Mm. I don't want to do that, that, you know, forcefulness. I was just like, welcome. Those that need this, those that want this impact, those that want to come and gather, this yeah. is your space. This yeah. is where you can come. Like, and I find that doing that has helped. Like, it's just purely referral based. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. And you have now tapping into this um, going, you know, card reading, your talent for tuning in, your intuition. Yeah. Have you found that that has just grown? Yeah, I've found the interest has grown, the clientele has grown mm -hmm. constantly. And it is taking a similar approach mm -hmm. in that, um, you know, that that attracting the clientele you want rather than chasing it mm. and that hard work. It's kind of working smarter mm. but also attracting the energy, you know, with your energy attracting what will resonate mm. because we are all at different frequencies. And so, you know, we want to raise our frequency and we want to attract others that are at that high frequency. Mm. So, um Chasing feels like a very 3D kind yeah. of approach. Yeah. Um, I would say 2D. Yeah. <laughs> very yeah. stompy approach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I think there are different ways yeah, of attracting a uh, tribe. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, and for next year, something that popped into my mind is I I think because I'm now tapping into my feminine energy and I've been learning about it's okay to receive. Yeah. <laughs> I know you've been telling me this is like Balana because I'm so hyper independent like you are. It's so true. <laughs> and it's for many of us, a lot of us. Yeah. And I I don't ask for help. <laughs> and so I've been I've been trolling it. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of like, why are you asking for help? I'm like, I don't know. I feel like that holding yeah. on, like as if I failed and I must do it myself. So for me in the new year is to set that energy yeah. of receiving. I'm yes. open to receiving. I really am. Yeah. Whatever the universe provides. I mean, good stuff, obviously, because that's what the universe does. But yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think sometimes in that receiving, we want to own it all ourselves mm -hmm. and sometimes I think it's surrendering to allow other people to help us yeah. along the way. Yeah. yeah, so that has we been. We don't have to do it by ourselves. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. We don't. Yeah. We don't. Um, so, yeah, so what about for your comments about what you, what else you want to do, for, not do, but what other, what kind of, I don't know, things for growth for you? For me, year? for growth. Um, I am continuing to really do a lot of self-work and self-reflection mm -hmm. to understand that inner child every day more, mm -hmm. to get guidance from my higher self um, and just uh, letting go of fears. Mm -hmm. And really embracing more love and forgiveness. Yeah. But it can be challenging, you know, there are things that, you know, um, but then it's not challenging either. It's easy to, it's easy to love. Mm. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're my yeah. focuses. That's really good. And I like the word that you've used. It's about they're my focus. Yeah. It's kind of like, this is my New Year's resolution. <laughs> no, I can have one. Blah blah blah. All of that. Yeah. Which, as you can, if you want to take on the expression, that is so two D. <laughs> so stompy. Like, yeah. it's just not yeah. with it. <laughs> so, um, thank you, Anne Marie. Right. Uh, yeah. Our thank first you. show of New Year's resolutions. Not. <laughs> Um, I hope you guys have taken away some of these lived experience learning because um, the content that I'm coming out with um, in its diverse world, 
I really want people to understand it's authentic. Yes. You know, it's connectedness. It's real people. None of this marketing stuff. None of this <laughs> why, you know. Um, and what resonates with you, I want you to take it away. Yeah. So exactly. as we close, because we've got some wonderful cards here. Yes. And I did bring my Whispers of Aloha cards. Oh. What cards did you read? Oh, well, I'm going to set some energy for the new year. I have okay? my favourite labyrinth cards. Oh, which, wonderful. Um, the friend of mine has a labyrinth centre mm -hmm. um, up on Inner Blue Mountains. Ooh. But I also like to select from the Everyday Positive Thinking by Louise Hay. Oh, Louise Hay is like, yeah, yeah she's usually. If I select one, it's always kind of something you'll need to hear. Yeah. So it says, treat your body with respect by mm -hmm. feeding it nourishing and nutritious foods. Mm -hmm. If you're good to your body, it will be good to you by Sylvia Brown. Oh. And we enjoyed that really nice breakfast. Yes, we did. <laughs> Thank you. We had a lovely breakfast. We Thank you, Marie. Your gifts of giving. Um, and I did because um, I do still am quite God-centered and traditional as well. So I did, we're going to just pick something from the Bible oh, nice. as well, because also I don't want to hear from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> going, what are you doing with all these cards? <laughs> so we're just going to incorporate it here and bring harmony to mama. <laughs> but that I find the higher conscious, the higher... Hi, you know, source, God. Yeah. It comes through the cards. It does. It absolutely does. We're not does. working in darkness. We're no. working in the light. We do. And, like, I have, like, it's interesting with people's, uh, when they say, okay, so you've got the Bible, you've got the cards, you've got the Quran, you've got the Torah. And I'm like, yeah, these are tools. Yeah. These are all tools like for me that's my perspective on yeah. it but we'll yeah. get to that there'll be another segment and i think it's when you actually in life yeah, yeah it's the intention from it because yeah we know that problems have occurred from the human heart so mm -hmm. another episode we'll go into that <laughs> a bit more so let's let's go okay for new year's what are we manifesting? Okay. What, what's the messages that are coming through? It says break free. Break free. Move away from situations that are not nurturing. Oh, you. let's wow. show them. Okay. So yes. it is really reminding us that, you know, if we are talking about new resolutions or just, you know, a new moon cycle or a new phase, that now is the time to to set ourselves free, to, like a butterfly, to set ourselves free, move all, recognizing situations that are not healthy for us. Mm. And sometimes it's hard to even recognize those situations. Yeah. And it's listening yes. to our body and going, this incongruence, this grinding, something's not right, and we may not be able to articulate or put our finger on it, but we know something's upsetting mm. us. And just being mindful of that as a sort of starting point mm -hmm. to self-love. Okay, so what we're I'm going to do the Aloha cards and what I like to do is uh, I'll draw one. You can continue. Um, and I've always let somebody told me that you draw three cards. One is the truth of the matter, what mm -hmm. it really is. So let's say the truth of next year. Mm -hmm. um, the reality of next year and the outcome of next year. Yeah, so that's yeah. what I'm going to do. The reality, the yeah. outcome. Like the situation. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, say yeah, yeah. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. And if time's not me, I think it doesn't make any yeah. more sense. It doesn't make more sense. And also what I find is the past is really kind of a little bit of how we got to where we are yeah yeah so let's do that which which one would i i don't know my family is looking at it going what is she doing what is the aloha cards and i'm sipping so this one the spirit of aloha oh aloha aloha everyone and it says live with unity 
giving and receiving love. Oh, so a bit more into that. I mean, we've been talking about it right now. Yeah. So things, you cannot make this up. Can I have a look at the Yeah, card? you can have a look at the card because you cannot make this stuff up. I mean, Aloha is fluid connection. Yeah. So it's it's about universal timeline, not about the material world. It's about the bridging between material world and spiritual world. And so, especially Hawaiians, but Pacific, if you get back to your roots, <laughs> and then the true spirituality of the Pacific, they believe in the energy as a part of you. Mm. So um, when you talked about pain, it's because we're all in pain, like, you know, like the energy, like <laughs> when someone is experiencing joy, we all become joy. So, yeah, so there you go. Aloha is the breath of life. Oh, so I love it. this. Well, this is so good. Cool. And the cards very much come together. We do. Because we have butterflies and we have Correct. butterflies. We do. And we are talking about breaking free mm. and moving away from situations that are not nurturing you. And then this one is about, you know, uh, live with unity, giving and receiving, but it's also very much about breaking free in that picture. Absolutely, because it starts yeah. with learning how to love yourself and then spreading that love to those close to you, your friends and strangers. And, and it's just, see, this is the stuff, like this is where you talked about the messages coming in. Yeah. We've just had this conversation. I didn't pre-select it. <laughs> 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 Okay, well, so, well so it feels like for the new year, it's mm. very much about self-love, yeah. self-nurturing, moving away from toxic environments, setting ourselves free and letting the spirit rise. Oh, wow. absolutely. This is great. We're going to hold on to that one. What else do you have? Okay, well, let's do another one. want to share? Yeah. <laughs> Often, like, cards will jump out. Yes, of I've had that. Like a big chunk of cards. Yeah, I've, like, I've had cards just go, oh, yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Okay, it says change direction. Ooh. All paths change course at some stage. This is your time. And it's a reminder that as a collective and on our collective consciousness, there are paths that are going to converge soon. Mm. And there will be more information revealed to us. And it will have us question our reality. And in questioning our reality, it may force or encourage us to change a different direction, mm -hmm. to change our direction, whether that's changing our mindset, changing our thoughts, changing what we thought was our reality, changing our kind of our ethics or our, what we thought was truth. Um, yeah. So it's just, um, that is why I said it. <laughs> and so that's why I think we need to keep our minds open and not attach to any kind of philosophy or reality or because you know, we don't know anything. We know nothing. So we just have to keep our minds open to to everything. Yeah, it's so beautiful. It's so aligned. Yeah, like it's, you know, it's kind of like it's the messages coming through are cementing what we've just talked about. Yes. So yeah. So yeah. let's see the reality of the situation. We've gone through our aloha stage so the spirit of aloha so let's see what the reality is and what it will bring i feel that this is popping out here and it yeah. is oh, it's worth the risk you won't know if it's the right if it is right for you unless you try so yeah wow. so that like you were saying 
came through with, with your card. Wow. Yeah. So that this is the reality of the situation. And I guess when you're going to a new cycle, it's kind of like it's so much risk. Like I'm getting out of my comfort zone to change or to manifest or to love yourself or to get back into your talent. Yeah. It's a risk. It is a risk. And it takes courage. It does. And it takes, yeah, a lot of, like, you've got to stand up for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so this one, is you might be thinking about taking a risk with your goals. We talked about oh, no, 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 your fear could be interfering with this possibility. Why are we talking about fear? I know, too. and about being worried about how this will appear and how you would have to justify it to people and, you know, overcoming all the blockages. But yeah. it's worth it. So the cards are recognising that. They're saying we recognise there's going to be a risk. Yes. yes. The reality of the situation is to get to the Aloha stage, it's a risk, but yeah. it's worth it. And it's that leap of faith, isn't it? Mm. Not having, it's that leap of faith just believing that things will work out. And I think we put limitations on ourselves. We talked about that as well. Mm. Um, so you are capable. You are absolutely capable yeah. of doing this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's also our programming. You know, we've well, been programmed yeah. for so long to think that, oh, we can't take risks. But actually, the universe wants us to take yeah, yeah, it's kind of like someone said, God's got your back. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I think I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. Did you want to draw yeah, one more that you resonate, or did you want to introduce another uh, yeah, type of it. deck? Because there are different decks, so people are like, you talked about the woo woo with the woo, it's not like. There, there's even saint decks like so from I saints, Archangel Michael, Michael, which is relevant to all religions. Yeah. And I have a special space in my heart and oh. connection with Archangel Michael. Oh, I've been yes. to Mont Saint Michel. Oh, that's on my bucket list. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, twice because I love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, what's that? Right. It says, pay attention to your dreams. Mm. And there's a little prayer and it says, thank you for tucking me into bed tonight and helping me enjoy a wonderfully restful night's sleep. Archangel, I invite you into my dreams mm -hmm. as my teacher, my guide, my healer. Please allow me to understand this. And then, and then you put in a, to describe a specific situation mm -hmm. to understand this on a spiritual level and give me guidance. That is such a beautiful prayer. Yeah. And it's really, um, if you, you know, like I mentioned, my journey was starting to really listen to my dreams mm. and, and acknowledging that truth comes out. Yeah. And that um, they're not just dreams. Mm -hmm. Their dreams are like us operating in a parallel universe, a little bit like the Avatar. Mm -hmm. You know, when we go to sleep, it is not just nothingness. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of truth com is coming out during our dreams that we need to pay attention. And so the next phase to that is through meditation also mm -hmm. the truth comes out. But it's also saying that, um, reminding us to ground. Mm -hmm. So during this time, yeah, really taking the shoes off and with bare feet, spending fifteen minutes out in nature, mm -hmm. in our gardens, in the park, just grounding. It's very good for our bodies, and it is very much um, a way of self healing and self love. Um, so just reminding us to do that, especially right now. Mm -hmm. when, it, when it is feeling a bit, you know, Christmas and New Year's is a chaotic time. Um, so just to ground and um, and to feel that connection to source through, mm -hmm. through the garden. 
And I think um, we've talked a lot with my friends about the power of grounding. So, mm. I, I, yes, there will definitely be an episode about grounding, how, why, what it is. So, um, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And I feel a segue before I do the outcome card. I'm just going to flip through. And because we've gone into that message, and it just says, listen to me, all in distant lands, pay attention, you who are far away. The Lord called me before my birth, from within the womb he called me by name. He made the words a sharp as sword, he's hidden me in the shadow of his hand, I'm like sharp arrow in his quiver. So that's from Isaiah 49, and it resonates with that to say, you know, divine spirit god is is with you in yes. your sleep yeah in you know where he come he just called you but you know you're I'm created a from source so yeah oh that's beautiful it is light it also reminds us that yeah we are here for a reason mm. absolutely yeah um so the outcome card for that um, unless you wanted to draw something else, but I think I could that. Okay. This one. Beautiful, the cards. Okay, the outcome card is the glow of individuality. Oh, wow. <laughs> Adjust your life. To own your spark. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. So um that's a beautiful photo. That is. And what I love about these cards and why I encourage um to get back to your roots and understand your ancestral history and the culture and the wisdom back then is because this wisdom is Throughout the generations, it's universal. So and it's in our DNA. It's in our DNA. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, our cellular memory. Yes. And, so, uh, so. and it, that individuality, um, it's not to say that we're not part of the collective consciousness, but we need to be individuals to become part of that collective consciousness. And that individualism is what we what we need to disconnect from the matrix. And, so, and everybody's unique. Like we talked about our unique gifts and our unique body, and we run on a, our own tempo. So we have a you know everybody has their own energy, mm. and it's what's so brilliant about us that we special and unique in, a, in, a, in our own heartbeat, in our energetic flow. So it does say that to spend your productive periods when you're occasional at your best and to rest when you do and honour yourself, but trust your inner light and flow in your heart. It may be challenging. So it's a talk risk. Um, yeah, and just acknowledge that and make, make decisions in flow. Mm. So recognize the individuality, recognize the connection between yourself, each other as a collective as well. Yes. Because we all bring our individual gifts, our yeah. energy, like to the collective. Um, but yeah, it's it's a beautiful. That thing. is beautiful. Card. <laughs> well, thank you everybody. Or hopefully you loved this episode um, and take away what resonates. Um, but we will certainly make some comments, what you want to hear, anything from Anne-Marie or so. Um, I've got her details in the description if you want to connect with her. She's there on Instagram. Yeah, on Inspiration Day. Yeah, we creative stuff. Um, yeah, absolutely. So have a brilliant, energetic, aligned, New Year's, everyone. <laughs>